Uh, hi everybody. Uh, welcome to the to the to the to this fourth or fifth uh, UX Geek meeting. So this is mostly a catch up uh, meeting. So first of all, I will start with the introductions. Um, I, I believe uh, we all know each other. Maybe I don't think Vadek uh, can. Fran Fernandez has participated in previous SIG meetings. Are uh, introductions needed? Or? So just uh, hello everybody. I'm coming from the Jenkins security team. So mainly concerned about the potential aspect that could be worse for us in the future. Okay. Uh, hello, hello everyone. Uh, just another cloud VC engineer participating in an open source uh, team within the company and just trying to help in anything that I can. Okay. We, the rest of us has in, have introduced ourselves like three times now, so. Uh, <laughs> Felix, would it be possible to put the agenda up on screen? Oh yeah, sure. Um, sorry, all that. No problem. Okay, so now, well, I started with the point, second point. Uh, first point, uh, general review topic. So uh, the agenda for today is first, uh, I will introduce the um, created tickets on the open source data tracker. I created an epic as Oleg requested a few meetings ago. Uh, I will show, yeah, the, the issues created. Then we, I will give a quick update on the UI uh, progress. After that, uh, Joe will show his uh, will show the design deck uh, featuring the full page mocks that were requested a while ago, and also talking about a bit what's next uh, in regard with typography. I will follow up on the typography. Uh, then Joe, we, we will talk about um, basically the results uh, of the poll of Slack versus Gitter and the follow-up actions needed. And then Uli uh, will uh, raise a point, uh, raise a concern about the Bootstrap 3 grid, uh, how we can integrate the Bootstrap 4 version. Well, Uli will expand later. Are we missing any agenda item? Does anyone, would anyone like to add any agenda, uh, agenda item for today? OK. Well, if the, uh, since we can start. Okay, so starting with the, I have created um, an epic on the open source Jira tracker, uh, which we contains all of the all of the tasks and user stories basically that are related to this project to the pro uh, to the project under the scope of this SIG. Right now, I retroactively, retroactively added the JS Builder one to this epic. Uh, mostly, there's one user story for each UI uh, item, and then a few support ones, such as the uh, this one, which is a toolchain enhancement, and another minor one, which is rename the root breadcrumb. breadcrumb. Maybe, uh, yeah, this is just to show these issues to everybody. Uh, maybe somebody would like to discuss whether, for example, this last one, the renaming the root breadcrumb could be marked as beginner friendly, or in case we want to to give it priority or something. But yeah, just to share with everybody that this is here, and I welcome everybody to take a look at it and please correct the any description or anything. Um, does anyone would would anyone like to comment on on this topic or say something about this? Okay, let's go ahead then. Uh, next item: uh, UI work progress. Okay, so basically this uh, this sprint, uh, well, sorry, sprint. Uh, this uh, since last meeting we have created the header and breadcrumbs PR. It's being 
there were lots of comments. Uh, we did some work addressing those. Uh, it's the, it's a work in progress, but little work is left before we it can go to a full review status. Uh, just one thing, for example, that we saw that we will increase do a little increase to the scope of it. For example, we noticed that the footer is the same color as these breadcrumb bars, so we are probably to go in, gonna go ahead and also change the color of the footer because again, it doesn't make much sense to have just this footer being of this color. It looks off. Um, moving the UI to the so uh, any would it, does anyone like to would anyone like to comment on this before moving on? Okay, good. Um, after um, on a separate PR, we we are we are considering to enable right now. So, sorry. Right now, the UI, the new UI is toggled on a Java property at uh, Jenkins start time. So we are considering added, adding a runtime toggle, probably in the admin panel, to, to enable uh, or disable the new UI. So we are considering it doing in the manage Jenkins section so that system administrators could enable the flag for for the whole system. This is what our plans are, basically to make it a bit more usable than just a Java property. Uh, but we, we work on any feedback on this topic. Does anyone have any comment on this? Or any idea? What is the long goal objective there? Because if you look at Jira, for example, they are proposing the old UI and the new UI Currently, I'm still using the old UI because I can. The new UI is crap for some of the things and I don't want to use it. So I still have the possibility to use the previous UI. Do you expect the same thing for Jenkins? Um, yeah, just to, confer, uh, just to confirm again, this, the new UI, uh, the things that are enabled through the new UI for this uh, deliverable, for the Federal breadcrumbs, are just the, this logo section and header color. The rest of the layout and markup will be, uh, are going to go ahead and be in the baseline, in the product baseline. So that's what's opting right now. So uh, what is the boundary between the, the full rewomp in a sense and just the breadcrumb, the header and the breadcrumb? Sorry, can you, can you rephrase? Because at the moment, you are using the system property to enable or disable only the header, but you expect in the next or next next PR to rewomp the, the full UI in a sense, or to force the CSS rewomp to everybody, if I understand correctly. Yeah, um, so right now, what we are going to, uh, it's, uh, it's decided on a component per component basis. Right now, uh, it was decided uh, in a previous SIG meeting that uh, we are only hiding the theming behind the feature flag because um, all, uh, it was requested that Joe presented a full vis uh, vision through full page mocks before considering changing the default theme of Jenkins. So that's why we keep the old school view. Uh, but it's mostly a theme. The, the old UI fallback is just a theme. For example, look, uh, as it can be shown here. Then after this, it, can, it, it will be decided on a component per component basis. Basically, if we determine that changing a component is risky and it can break something, it will be hidden behind the feature flag. That, that, that's going to be the reasoning. Okay, just that I'm not seeing the advantage to have a, a real switch in the UI if it's just a quick CSS like this. Because the thing is that what you are adding to the UI, it's a bit difficult to remove afterwards due to the compatibility we want to keep and things like that. If it's just a feature flag, you add the feature flag, you keep it for six months and then you remove it, there is no impact. Yeah, that's uh, what we, I think everybody, we want to avoid having a 
two code bases in the long term. So that's why we are a bit proactively trying to make any and all changes final. It's just uh, I just think we just think it's a bit more usable for users to test the new UI without just going to the admin panel and toggle a checkbox on instead of having to go through all the steps pre-booting the Jenkins instance. And I don't think that toggle will be there. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, Felix, but the intention isn't for that toggle to be there forever, right? Oh, no. This Indeed. this would be, yeah. This this even though it's it's technically just CSS, but it's obviously a, a really big shift in the interface for Jenkins. So we want to have we want to offer that versatility in the short and medium term to be able to switch it off, or certain things that might be more questionable might be more breaking uh, adjustments. And, and it won't be there forever, is the intent. Okay, does anyone? Yes, uh, one, one more question, because since this is my first uh, meeting, probably I'm, I'm missing things. Uh, it's intended that in the future, uh, any user uh, we will be able to choose their own theme, or, uh, or, or, the, or is expected that everybody will see the same uh, styles in the in the when they when you access the the instance. The intent is is not to have a a, a variety of themes. Um, obviously, there are um, solutions out there for for applying themes to your Jenkins right now, and those are widely loved. But the intent here is to redesign the aesthetics do a visual refresh of, of Jenkins for everyone, it will look the same, essentially. Between those two options, it's that, it's that latter one. It's one, one redesign. It's not uh, the ability to choose from different themes. That's not the goal. Did I answer a question? Maybe I misunderstood. Yes, no, but no, no, no. It's, no, it's because I, uh, after uh, Patrick's question, I was thinking about the possibility of having the check instead of in the manage Jenkins page, uh, in the configuration page for each user. So each user can enter and decide if they, if they want one of other uh, uh, styles. But if, if not intended, it is just a temporary solution just to uh, make easier to switch between uh, one, the, the, the old styles and the new ones, just make more, more sense to, uh, to add the, the, the check in the Manage Jenkins and the page as Felix uh, proposed at the beginning. Yeah. And does anyone have any other thoughts on this? Okay, good, uh, let's move ahead then. So yeah, so basically uh, as Fran, uh, then we are going to try to add it in the Manage Jenkins section. Okay, um, full screen mocks. Uh, now I will be sharing my screen to show the full screen mocks with Joe. So we won't run through them right now, but, uh, or the first four slides there, but Wadek and Fran, if you, after this call, I always share in the, uh, Slug, the SIG Slack channel, this, uh, this deck, whatever it looks like, and from that call. And those three slides are always there and they give a little bit more context for the project at large, if you wanna check those out. But yeah, digging into this one. So this is uh, not from our previous SIG meeting, well, from our previous SIG meeting, but from also, also from the one before that, we had conversation around getting a better idea of the goal. Actually, can you go back one step, Felix, or one slide? One more, please. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, of getting a better idea of, of where this is going, right? So we started off with our, our first component and naturally the design process was a bit slow there just because this was our first, our first time figuring out how we can do this as a group. Um, last, last SIG meeting, we took a look at the impact of these sorts of conversations and of this group because the design actually changed really dramatically with everyone's input and it was way better off. So that was great. Um, but we, as a group, we've been wanting to see oh, what, what could it look like, you know, instead of just looking at it component by component. So there's some pros and some cons to, um, to designing a full screen muck like this uh, at this stage in the process. Um, essentially, the, the only danger, for lack of a better word, around that is 
um, that it can set the wrong um, the wrong intention potentially, right? So we, I want to make it real clear with these mocks that these are not set in stone. Um, these designs are going to change. And so that's what I'm kind of mentioning on the slide there. The goal is to communicate a long-term vision for the impact of this visual refresh, the CSS phase. But these are going to change, right? Just like with the uh, just like with the header bar, we encountered some technical limitations that impacted the design. Uh, I got feedback from all of you that impacted the design, which is great. The same thing's going to happen for everything on this screen and the other screen. We'll look at in a second. So take it with a grain of salt. But this is what we were we were wanting to see a couple of weeks back of what we can we can be working toward. And the cool thing here too is that I can now use this uh, over in my screen design software as a springboard for designing all these new components. Just like we had uh, in the last meeting looked at all of the interactive states um, for the header bar and all of the different um, considerations there for, for designing this one component. Now I have a solid starting place for designing all these other components, table styles, buttons, what this nav panel could look like. Um, so in that regard, this is a, a really great exercise too. Uh, and this is to give an idea. Now we can go to the next slide. Looks. This is the same screen, a little larger. And then if we go one more slide, this is what, you know, again, asterisk marks, asterisk marks, uh, take, it, take it all with a grain of salt, but this is what we could achieve you know, potentially with, with a, a build view, for example. So I'll stop there, and obviously we keep our conversation pretty freeform here. You can interrupt me anytime. But does anyone have any questions or thoughts on on this stuff? Um, do you think it wouldn't better if we have some more user interaction in these pages? So these pages are quite a, a static. Uh, so what a lot of people ask me is why can't I rearrange these items on the screen, for instance. So this would be one of the most valuable features if these mm -hmm. pages have a, a concept of dashboard thing where you can put in things and move things off and things like that. That would yeah. be really awesome. I'm not sure if I, it makes I, sense, but yeah. You know, it does make perfect sense. I totally agree. And frankly, taking a step back, if if uh, if this were the the right phase of this this long term Jenkins project to, to think through that sort of thing, mm -hmm. this this part these mocks would look very different, right? Um, in a in a perfect world, and, and if timelines weren't weren't a factor, I would love to just reconsider a lot about the user experience here because you're right. There's so much opportunity for improvement. That said, right now, and the scope here is for these mocks is, is just this visual refresh, right? Just this CSS phase, uh, not changing functionality. Um, that's, I mean, that said, that's something for the future. And, and yes, I would love to make something like that possible. There's all sorts of great stuff we could dig into. We're just not there yet. So for now, it is purely aesthetic, you're right. Mm -hmm. Would you be looking at things like refreshing the icons? Um, that some of those panels have in the middle? They yes. They kind of look a bit different to the rest of the page. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great point. Um, so uh, some that come package, packaged uh, within Jenkins would, would definitely need to be revisited. Uh, some that are contributed uh, via plugins would, you know, I wouldn't have a very much ability to, to change those and that's okay too. But yes, in short, yeah. So one example of how this will change. There you go. Maybe we can toggle back a slide. Um, obviously, you know, we have our SIG meetings, one every other week, but conversation is going in Slack and soon Gitter. We'll talk about that in a second. So anytime, reach out and let's, let's talk about these. And then if we go to the next section of the deck. So in our last meeting, we took a look at um, a new color palette for the Jenkins UI, something that is informing the design of individual components and that also inform the design of those full screen mocks. Uh, it's something that uh, a, lot like, a lot like a lot of the content we look at in this meeting will continue to evolve, right? It's not perfect yet, it will change, but it was created with accessibility in mind uh, for, for 
uh, high contrast uh, UI. And the other item we looked at was interactive states. Today, we're gonna to take a quick look at typographic hierarchy. These are the elements uh, of, of interface design that come together and will inform all of these additional components that we kind of saw early representations of in those full screen mocks, right? Table styles, buttons, nav, that sort of stuff. So the intended outcome with this is to establish a formal typographic hier hierarchy for the Jenkins UI that improves legibility and that results in a more consistent experience throughout. <clears throat> so still being defined. And if we go uh, to one more screen, Felix, that's a bit, a bit more context. Um, I know it can be hard to see on the screen, but of course you'll have access to this deck after the call. Uh, and you know, still, still a work in progress as with these other items. The font selections that you see here are also not final. Um, this is something we'll talk about in just a second, but uh, we know that Jenkins has um, very important internationalization needs, and and therefore, you know, we can't just go about picking picking fonts just based on on uh, legibility alone. They have to have a certain degree of compatibility with other languages besides English, for sure. Um, so we'll talk about that in a second. And that's actually it for this deck, I think. Does anyone want to comment on this or have any questions? Just one comment about the heading. In general, we have some trouble when we have something like that that is separated into a multiple tier because often the H5, is it in the same size or smaller than the regular text? And it seems to be the case here with 16 and I think 18 for the paragraph body. And in this case, the title or the sub 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 subtitle is smaller than the text inside the, the paragraph. So it's something that we have, for example, in Google Doc, it's the same kind of stuff. And if you are digging too, be, too much into the, the title level, it's a bit weird. So if we can increase a bit the, the smaller title, it could be nice, at least from my point of view. I completely agree. Yeah. So that's something that needs to be fixed here, right? And no, in no example should should a, a heading uh, level be smaller than paragraph text. So in those full screen mocks, um, there was a, a case where that became useful. But yeah, that, that can't stay. Totally agree. Uh, one uh, thing I want to mention is what is currently done by a lot of plugin developers is they choose uh, H1, H2, or H3. They choose one thing that they like. So I think it would make sense that everybody starts with H1 and then H2 and so on. But currently, one does not select the semantics. If someone selects the font size, and that's just a little bit strange i think so it makes sense that we define that if you have a new page then you need to start with h1 and so on otherwise it looks a little bit weird um we what we can do Uli, is yeah. uh, we uh, what i you always like to do in all my projects I, one approach that i found works really well is uh, for example i i i want i will style the, the h1 tag but I will also create an H1 CSS class that I can apply everywhere with the same styles. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think that approach works really well. So if semantically uh, somebody wants to put an H3, but they want it to look like an H1, they could use the H1 class. Mm -hmm. No, that's good. Mm -hmm. Other than that, my, my recommendation is to always use the headers, uh, sorry, the heading elements plain, no classes, just the proper margins, the proper the default styles, mm -hmm. because it's more homogeneous. But uh, for that, it, it, you're right. Uh, we need, we plug, uh, plugin authors need, need to have available actual typographic classes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I want to be uh, mindful of the time because I know we have other agenda items. Does anyone else have any thoughts or questions for now? Cool. I think we could probably move on, Felix. Sure. Back to the agenda. 
uh, revisiting typography. Yeah, just a quick, quick mention of something. Um, choosing fonts. Joe mentioned that we we are looking into choosing new fonts. Oh, right now we are w going with Roboto. Why? Because it's well, basically it was being used also before in the project. It was. Uh, Felix, I think you cut out there. I'm not sure if it was just for me. Can you repeat that after Roboto? Yeah, sorry. So right now um, we chose Roboto. It fits the material design theme. Uh, it also was the font already used in the Jenkins project. We, uh, we are also aware that a huge part of the Jenkins use base, for example, is located in China. So we, what we are probably going to to try is to get in touch with the Chinese localization SIG to get collector feedback or whether the, there are good fo font fallbacks for, Ch for Chinese characters or other non-Latin alphabets. And, uh, and if not, maybe they can recommend a font such as Noto, for example, which is really big or something. This is, yeah, this is just to mention that we are aware of this. Uh, does anyone want to, would anyone like to comment on this? Just a quick question, perhaps a bit stupid. Uh, mm -hmm. The right to left, left to right approach is not in the scope of this change for Arabic character and things like that. Are they currently supported in Jenkins? Yeah, concerning the global approach that we want to, to use here for the refresh of the UI, we are not considering changing the localization strategy in a sense. It's just for the font, for the Chinese people, that we are caring a bit more than the other thing. Yeah, it is mostly to see that we don't choose a font that will break existing functionality. Okay. All right. But that's a good point, Fadek. Maybe we can talk about that in the future. Awesome. I think we have reached uh, item number seven, and I want to make sure we leave mm -hmm. time for item number eight, so I'll be quick. Um, in the last SIG meeting, we talked about whether or not we should be having our discussions in Slack or someplace, someplace that for some people is more central, which is Gitter. Um, lots of pros and cons, which I don't have to go through here, but one of the most important ones being that Slack is in the CDF organization. So it's, it's unpaid and therefore we have to kind of manually archive our, our valuable technical conversations. Another thing is that all the other SIGs are using um, Gitter and it makes more sense for more people. So I put a poll up in our Slack and it turns out that Gitter is the preference. So uh, I'll follow up for now in Slack after this call and, and we'll get it sorted, we'll get the group created I'll be new to Gitter, so I'll figure it out and, and we'll get that going. But before the next meeting, I think we should be able to transition over. And then all of our conversations should be more public too. Uh, and that's it for that one. So thanks everyone for, for voting in the, the poll. Okay, last item. Uh, so we have nine minutes by the way, because I forgot to create the room with a proper Zoom account, but we can, we can rest, restart in another room if we run out of time. So Uli, can you, mm -hmm. can you please uh, bring up actually, this point? Yeah, actually this point is mostly a question if I should do something here, because um, I'm currently extracting the UI components that I'm using in the warnings plugin into separate UI modules. Uh, I already wrote a mail about that. And we had a discussion, uh, we both uh, on, on the pull request, uh, where I noticed that Bootstrap 4 is not compatible with Bootstrap 3, which we are using in Jenkins. And I tried to get it fixed, but I came from one bug to the next bug uh, because we are using not plain vanilla Bootstrap 3, we are using 24 columns. And so uh, everything is breaking in my plugin if, we, if I use this old grid. So I'm wondering if it makes sense if I create a pull request for Jenkins core that replaces this grid with a bootstrap 4 version. So I'm not sure if I should make it 
because UI changes in core are somewhat complicated because we have new tests, etc. So I just wanted to know if it makes sense because we're currently maybe breaking other things as well <laughs> with the new UI changes. So if we put it also in a pull request or if I should wait for it. So I just want to have some opinions here. Mm, yeah, so yeah, the thing with the 24 column, I don't know why, why, why is that? I, that's something I discovered earlier this week. It would make that change incompatible with basically everything. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, a, that's an issue, definitely. That's something uh, because there, I also looked that there are many plugins which use column 13, column 20. Okay. So that would break. Also, I think replacing the column, the grid system is not viable. You, we, could, we could deprecate it, but it's not viable. My recommendation here would be to create a new grid, uh, maybe a new grid file. Um, and I would namespace it. It's rather easy. For example, you would have Jenkins.call.xl.1, something like that. Jenkins. Uh, Jenkins-row, Jenkins-container. Um, that, that, that actually, by the way, that should, we should be doing plugins should be, be namespaced in there. Own CSS, Jenkins core should namespace its, uh, its base components. So Uli, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to, um, Bootstrap, Bootstrap provides several mixings to generate a grid, right? Several SaaS utilities to generate a grid. With little modification, you could create custom mixes based on those to create a, to create a namespace grid. So please give me a few days and I will try to get a quick SaaS mixing, a quick SaaS code that okay. would generate a grid. A bootstrap like grid, but with namespace classes. Okay, that's fine. Thanks. Uh, Uli, just a question concerning the warning ng. It's for full page layout or for uh, widgets that are integrated into the rest of the UI of Jenkins? Mm, yeah, actually, it's the last page uh, of the warnings plugin. That means if you're leaving the build, information page you can open plugin details and on this page i'm using bootstrap for and so you're page. completely separated from the jenkins ui at that point i don't i'm sorry can you please repeat sorry so when you open the the last page you're separated from the rest of the ui and uh, no i'm not separated because i'm also using the header bar the footer and the links on the left side so it's a little bit more complicated. Okay. It's just because if you add a completely independent page, yeah, we can just say we don't care and that's all, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, but I don't want to have it this, this way. I want to look it, should look like yeah, Jenkins. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any other questions here? Um, just one mention, Uli, on the topic yeah. of the warnings and the plugin. I will try to do my best. I try to to make the, um, the base layout for the warnings and the plugin to not break as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I left the, the base styles and the layout commons in the repo, not deleted, so that your plugin, the plugin, can make use of those files. So, mm -hmm. I, but if you do do try the new header changes with the warnings and the plugin and raise any issue, and I will do my best to solve it if possible. Okay. 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 Does um, does anyone want to say something else or bring something to uh, to attention? Yes, we're gonna get recurring meetings set up so that we don't have to have last minute links. Sorry about yeah. that, y'all. We'll oh, get that yeah. going. Definitely, we forgot to apologize. Yeah. And yeah, something that's on us, our part, we should have gave uh, this a few days notice. Definitely, so, uh, and we apologize for that. But, but that's it from my end. Uh, and I'm watching the clock here. Anyone have any other uh, final notes? And I'll follow up in Slack today as usual with links and 
and the getter item. Cool. Okay. Thank you all. So thank you very much, everybody. And uh, next meeting will be two weeks from now. So which day will it be? 20, 21st? Two cool. Wednesdays from now. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Have thanks, a good day. everyone. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone.